Hey there Aquarius, Aquarius Rising, and Aquarius Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and card horoscope for the week starting July 17th, 2017. Um, obviously I am doing something a little different just this one week. Those of you who've been following me for a while know whenever I get new cards, I like to show off the cards just a little bit for a week and then we'll go back to the way things were. Or possibly something even better. I've been thinking about other ways to, to you know, to, to, to do the videos and we'll see what happens uh, when I get back. Um, that being said, I am not going to be available to be doing readings between the 16th and the 22nd. This week I'm actually going to be out of town and therefore unavailable to do appointments or video files of any kind. Um, if you do order video files, they will be put in a queue and done in the order in which they were received upon my return. So um, just keep that in mind out there, all of you Aquarian people who are interested in getting a video file. And of course, when it comes to appointments, there's a self-schedule application on the website. So you don't even need to email me about that. You just self-schedule yourself. Um, the decks I'm actually using are the Llewellyn Tarot, which is actually um, a deck that I used to use way back in the day, like pre-YouTube. Pre-YouTube's existence. This was like college, working regular job, 2006, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, found it again, love this deck to pieces, um, really enjoying working with it. And then over here for the new Oracle deck, I've got the uh, Druid Animal Oracle, which is actually really, really cool. And you know how hard it is for me to find an Oracle deck I really like. So... Um, big wins all around as far as that's concerned. And don't forget the Tarot Home Study course is available for purchase and download. For only $35 you get over three hours of instruction from me as well as supplemental documentation, uh, sorry, sorry, supplemental documents uh, including spreads and interpretation sheets and all kinds of stuff to help you study tarot at your own pace, on your own time, and in your own space. So what's going on with your astrology this week? Well, this week, um, it all happens in the very, very beginning, Monday and Tuesday, and then everything else is easy breezy, relaxed and calm. But on Monday, we tend to have sort of the low, and then on Tuesday, we have the high. So again, remember, it's just for one week anyway, it's not for the rest of our lives. But on Monday, we do have Venus, planet of, you know, normally harmony, love and pleasure, forming a very difficult and awkward square to Neptune. And this is going to be happening between your fifth house of love, romance, and your earned income sector. And whenever Venus and Neptune get together this way, I'm always concerned about a tainted opportunity um, or a prospect or something being put on the table that's, you know, as I've been saying to a lot of signs, flawed from the ground up. Um, and this may be uh, a financial opportunity that comes through a lover um, that will not pan out. And that can be kind of difficult, you know, especially if they're trying to help out. Um, that can be difficult in and of itself. Um, this could indicate, yes, an, a situation where there may be some awkward romantic chemistry uh, or some tension, again, in a flawed situation at work. Um, this could also show up as a, a circumstance where maybe, you know, work and our love life are kind of meshing the wrong way. Um, or maybe some work friends and our partner are not really getting along all so well, or our work schedule and, you know, our time with our lover is not working out all so well. Um, and it kind of comes to a bit of a boiling point, so let's be careful around this day. It is only for one day, thank goodness, so it may just pass us by. <clears throat> We've also got on the same day, though, Mars, planet of action and energy in Cancer, in your eighth house of shared resources and passive income, forming a tense square to Uranus, currently in your third house of communications, pacts, and promises. And a fight may break out about money that is, um, again, being shared or in the care of or in the name of somebody else. Um, this may be money that is owed to you and somebody else is holding on to it. There may be a situation going on over a dispute over a debt being owed or the alteration to a payment plan or a pay schedule or a payment agreement um, that we do need to contest. Um, you're the only sign that I would honestly say, looking at these energies, does need to seriously consider actually disputing this situation, whatever it is, um, because somebody may be trying to very unfairly um, alter the arrangement, whether they're paying you back or you're paying them back. Um, there seems to be some kind of really, really big, sort of almost like surprise 
um, twist that's trying to be put on the table, but luckily with Uranus we can also take it off, so it may just all be talk. Now on Tuesday we do have our high of the week <laughs> in a good way. We've got Venus in that fifth house of love and romance forming a charming trine to Jupiter in your ninth house of travel, higher education, um, your spiritual life, and this seems to me like a love opportunity may come um, while you are actually endeavoring in one of these opportunities. We may also be meeting somebody um, new, even if we're not doing these things, we may be meeting somebody who is uh, coming into our life who, you know, maybe they went to the same school, or maybe they went to the same college, they went to the same university, um, maybe they're from a foreign country that we've always been enamored with, or there's, you know, maybe they're a part of the same spiritual path or practice that you're on. So we have, you know, again, a very interesting beginning of the week. We got kind of a low uh, with Monday, but a real high on Tuesday. And then luckily the rest is even Stevens. So what's going on with your cards this week? Well, <clears throat> for your Earth sector, when it comes to your work and finances, we do have the Chariot card upright. You know, and this can actually be wonderful news as far as work and finances, because this is a card of victory and triumph over obstacles. So I'm not so worried about, you know, the Mars Uranus square. You know, I always have to remind people I'm not a fatalist astrologer. I'm not a determinist astrologer. Um, the way I practiced, the way I learned, you know, the whole point was to learn how to change your reality in, in a more effective way, not to just sit and, you know, be a victim. So I honestly think that this card is working out in your favor. Um, the Chariot card upright often does talk about some kind of major win or major triumph um, and something possibly even being celebrated in your honor. Uh, this could be whoop, glittering reviews coming for a project you've recently submitted. This could actually be a testimonial or a review that gets you extremely high marks and extremely high credibility. Possibly even some kind of reference, like a character reference, character uh, witness type of situation, you know, either from a client or a coworker, uh, that really does keep, put you a cut above the rest, possibly in a way that you can actually you know, be expected to be given better treatment, but not just better treatment, but actually better opportunities, more challenging opportunities. Um, this may actually come from a new job that's coming your way. You may be finding out that you've just, you know, soared through an interview process, or possibly even one where, you know, you are currently at. There may actually be something kind of, you know, giving you a bit of 15 minutes of fame at the office. For your communications with air, when it comes to your friends, your relatives, and the others in your life, we've got the Magician card reversed. And again, um, there seems to be a challenge going on here where I feel like somebody is trying to pull something off that they have no talent or business actually doing. And um, with the Magician card reversed, this can often show up as somebody who is trying to maybe actually not necessarily pull one over on you in a scammy kind of way, but maybe actually try really to get you to, you know, encourage them or fund them or support them in something that you know it's not, not only would it not be good for you, but it might not actually be good for them. You know, this could be a crazy pie in the sky idea. This could be, you know, uh, something they're prone to. Maybe they're one of those people that's kind of always prone to, you know, these big phases, these big fads. You know, and it, it seems like with the, with the Magician card reverse, this time this person seems extra wound up about it, but that doesn't make it any more special. Be careful when it comes to handling this person, though, because I kind of feel like even though this is, yes, just another one of those situations, I'm a little bit worried that it's symptomatic of another issue they've got going on that they're avoiding, and they may take that out on this circumstance. For your challenge this week with fire, we do have the sun card reversed, not a bad card to have reversed and not a bad card to have as a challenge because the sun card reversed is basically talking about a need to pay attention to where, you know, where in your life do we need some more simple sweetness? You know, your challenge this week is making sure that you can actually kind of groom yourself and your environment to be a more hospitable place for that. You know, sometimes you have to check ourselves every once in a while. You know, are we in a place where there is a sense of sanctuary where the drama stops, the work stays at work, you know, the, you know, everyone can kind of relax and chill out and, you know, can everyone still feel that sweetness and feel the love in the air? You know, unfortunately, sometimes there are places and circles where the drama does not stop and it just keeps going and the highs get higher and the lower, lows get lower. 
But your challenge this week is making sure, again, that you are actually grooming yourself and grooming your space, your environment, your social environment especially, to actually be <coughs> excuse me, a place that is more hospitable to that sweetness. Because it's talking about bringing a bit more of that wholesome simplicity into your space. And, you know, with Saturn in your, your 11th house of friendships and social networking, you know, all the way up until about December, you know, that's kind of grooming your social life, grooming the company that you keep is what you should be doing. And with Saturn retrograde right now, it should be all the easier to see what exactly needs to be shifted. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we do have the star card reversed. And the star card reversed, uh, it was actually talking about a very, very sweet moment coming up here in love and romance. Um, there, the star card reverse can often indicate sort of getting started on something that's going to take a long time to finish, but sometimes that's actually kind of the best thing that you can do with a sweetheart or with somebody that you're dating. You know, getting started on a project or some kind of team effort, joint effort, or maybe some big goal um, can, you know, having it over really quickly means the adventure's over, you know. I'm the type of person who gets depressed when I realize I'm at the end of the, you know, when I'm, at, when I'm starting the last chapter of any book. So starting a new book or starting something brand new like that with a partner is gorgeous. But also with the star card reverse, it's important to pay attention that we can't cash in on all the rewards of this right away. This is meant to be a longer story and play a longer game. For those of you who are currently single, this can indicate you meeting somebody who actually does have absolute potential, but we may not be able to just kind of stampede into the relationship this week. This may actually be something that does take a little bit of time to develop, but it's all the more worth it to make it actually kind of grow and nurture organically. And the nice thing about the star card reverse is that saying that, you know, again, whether or not, you know, it feels good to have it now or later, it's still a good prospect nonetheless for all of you involved. For your spiritual advice, we do have the card of the frog uh, from the Druid Animal Oracle. And the frog is kind of an interesting card here because it does talk about a need to be able to leave things complicated and be able to actually maintain a sense of groundedness when something isn't actually made overly simple and simplistic. Um, when we talk about that, again, you know, sure, we have the sun saying, you know, you need to groom an environment that's going to actually lend itself to, you know, some sweetness, some wholesome simplicity. But that doesn't mean you groom every environment around you. You know, the, wa the, you know, the frog does not have a problem being on land or in water. The frog doesn't have to change every environment around it. It doesn't have to um, turn everything upside down. You know, the, the frog is pretty much at home anywhere. Yes, of course, it builds a nest. That's what you're working on with the sun card reversed. But if you're trying to find a way to, you know, to fit into an ideal environment by changing every environment you go into, of course, you're going to be met with resistance. And this week, it's important to pay attention to where, you know, sometimes we actually have to be able to let something be exactly what it is 100%. Um, sometimes the biggest issues I think that can come up when we get cards like this for folks is that they try to blend a lot in their life. You know, they try to blend all of their priorities into one thing to make it simple, but that actually doesn't. It just makes one big complicated thing. You know, if work and romance and, you know, personal development and healing and spiritual practice and art and, you know, parenting, if those all merge together into one thing, the frog is kind of telling us that can be a problem. There could be too much overlap going on in our space, making neither of them purely able to actually be exactly what they're meant to be. So we have to make sure that, again, while we're doing this grooming, we are not allowing for too much overlap in that sense. The people can overlap, but the environments, the situations, and what goes down there should not. It's all about being present. So that is your horoscope, Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you ever want to get a session, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.